Hey everybody, so today we're going to be doing front brakes in a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 3.6 liter V6. So today we're just going to be doing an OEM brake swap, nothing too fancy. On the floor over there I have two brake rotors and uh, pads and hardware kit. That all came as part of a power stop kit. I'll leave a link in the description. This is just for, you know, just an OEM stock replacement. Um, and this vehicle has the, the solid rear rotors, not the vented ones. So again, this is just a regular OEM quality um, brake upgrade or brake installation, brake replacement. Um, there's probably still a little bit of meat left on these on these uh, on these brakes, but I figure the vehicle has about 80,000 miles on there. It's getting to be about that time, so just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do one side on film and uh, maybe the other side too. We'll see how I'm feeling, but let's get the vehicle jacked up, um, supported safely, and we'll get started. Okay, like I said, the first step is to lift the vehicle and support it safely. Got my three-ton floor jack in position. Got a jack stand to go under the vehicle. You never want to rely on a floor jack to hold a vehicle up um, just because um, you could have a hydraulic seal failure. I mean, it's actually happened to me before. Um, not fun. I was pumping up. Thankfully, it was a pretty light vehicle. It was a Honda Civic. And I was pumping, and then you know I slowly saw the vehicle drop and sag. This And this very jack blew a hydraulic seal. So it was a pretty easy replacement, thankfully. Anyway, I digress. Don't forget to chuck your rear tires with... Uh, um, with wheel chocks and also put your parking brake on. I like to verify that the parking brake is actually functioning so what I'll do is I'll put the vehicle par vehicle's parking brake on and I'll put the vehicle in gear just drive no gas and the vehicle should not move. If it does then you need to have your parking brake serviced. So let's get this jack in position. Get a visitor in a minute. Just saw a neighbor drive by. Okay, and we'll stick our jack stand under there. And you just need the tire to be off the ground. It doesn't have to go up 75 miles. So just enough so it freely rotates like that. Okay, got the vehicle supported by both the jack stand and the floor jack. You can see the that little blue piece right there. That's the jack stand underneath one of the control our mounting point. So got the vehicle weight kind of split between the two, which is fine. Okay, got our 7 8 slash 22 millimeter socket on a half inch impact gun. Uh, take this wheel off. If you don't have an impact gun, uh, you may want to consider cracking the lug nuts open a tiny bit, uh, maybe an eighth of a turn just with a with a wrench with the vehicle on the ground. Otherwise you will not be able to, uh, to loosen them too easily with the wheel off the ground because it will spin. Okay, let's take our tire off. Maybe get the brake rotors out of the way. Okay. So we have the wheel off. Um, you'll see here, that's the remaining brake pad thickness. So there's, there's some, a little bit of meat left on these, but not a whole lot. Um, like I said, 80,000 miles, so see what the inboard pad looks like. Now to do a brake job on this vehicle, you're going to need what I consider to be a bit of a special tool. 
This is an 11 millimeter Allen key to get the caliper slide pin bolts off. Uh, without that, you will not be able to, to do a brake job. So that said, um, I will leave a link to that in the description if anybody's considering doing this, just to make life easier for you. If you're changing the rotors, you are also going to need a 1316 socket to remove the caliper uh, bracket that bolts to the, the knuckle here. So uh, let's get that, let's get that caliper off. One. There's a little plastic cap that covers these, these bolts here. It just pops right off. You can take it off with your finger now. Doesn't unscrew or anything. Just gonna get the bottom one. And of course the landscapers are here. Yeah, it sounds like they're gone. Now it does look like the outboard pad, this side, is worn more than the inboard pad. If you watched my video on the rear brakes of this same vehicle, I believe that was also the case. And my memory is good, which it probably isn't. The root cause of that was lack of lube on the slide pin bolts. Let me whiz these out. Okay, let's see if our caliper wants to come off. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes compressing them a little bit with a clamp helps. I got this big C clamp here. Before you go clamp in here, check your brake fluid reservoir under the hood to make sure it's not full or close to full. Because when you compress that piston caliper, you're going to force brake fluid back to the master cylinder. So mine is about an inch down, so I'm good. So let's put. this. This is a two piston caliper so you may need to hit the bottom one too. And I do make special tools for all this but this is just uh, how to do this in your garage with no special tools. Some vehicles, especially in the back, need a special brake caliper rewinding tool. That's typically the case if you have a rear parking brake that is a disc brake, or it can be the case. This bad boy is still stuck on there. Let me get a screwdriver. That bolt might still be in, in there a thread or two. I'll pull the slide pin bolts out just to keep them from getting in the way. And that's kind of what they look like. Kind of an odd design. Not something you see every day. And they do feel very, very dry. Not a smidge of grease on there. Let's try taking our caliper off again. holding us on here. Oh, probably this clip here, right? This will probably go flying across the room. There's probably a special trick to this, but I don't know what it is. Anybody else know? Aside from just prying. Let me get another screwdriver. There we go. She's coming. There we go. Now our caliper should be free. I have one of these little hanger thingies here. You're not supposed to let the caliper dangle from uh, from any hoses or anything. So what we'll do is we'll stick this 
or anywhere, but I'm not seeing too many anywhere to put this. Really? I guess we could go like that. Or we could just stick it right here and screw the hangers. So let's look at our outboard pad. So you can see. How reasonably well worn that is. There's still a little bit of meat left on it, but not a whole lot. Let's take a look at the inboard pad now. Considerable amount of meat left on that one. This is the same behavior we saw on the back. So just to do a side by side comparison, look at that. Uneven brake pad wear. Nice. Uh, all right, what's next? Let's, um, I really like to hang this the better because I don't want it to fall. But there's really no good place to hang it from. Unless maybe from here. Yeah, I guess that'll work. Is there anything to hang it from inside, inside here? Maybe a coil spring? Not really. Oh, I'll figure it out. Not, not your problem. Was able to hang the caliper, just got the, the hanger on one of the coil springs there. Let's take uh, the brake rotor off next. So to do that, you got to remove those, uh, what, those 13 16 Yeah, 13 16 bolts in the back here. You're not going to be able to see them, but you'll have to trust me that they're there. And they're usually on crazy, crazy tight, so this might be fun. Oh yeah, they're on there good. Get a bigger ratchet. Or I could use my impact gun, right? Got a little breaker bar here. Go to the top bolt first. There we go. She's turning. And she's loose. Bottom bolt, same thing. And there's only two. She's loose too. Really the only tool you need is that 11 millimeter socket, otherwise you're not going to get that caliper off. 13 16 socket is not all that unusual. So these are the, the bolts that hold caliper bracket on. Again, 13 16. Get that top bolt off. You obviously cannot get the rotor off with this bracket in place, which is why we're doing this. Make sure you drop all your tools, that's pretty important. If you don't drop them, they're not working hard enough. There's the other bolt, and there's our bracket. Now you want to check for wear, particularly in this area. You don't want there to be any grooves. If there are some grooves, minor grooves, you can file those just to remove any, any burrs. I don't really feel anything here except maybe a little bit right there, but not, not worth taking a file to. Feel in this groove too. This bracket's in great shape. We'll just clean it up. And to remove the rotor, probably gonna need a little bit of persuasion. Install some hearing protection, because this is gonna be loud. Only doing this because we're going to replace the rotor. He's on there good. Time to get a bigger hammer. 
our friend the sledge, the little sledge. She's moving now, I can see it. Oh, that's right. This the back side had some weird little O ring or something, right? I remember that now. Kind of weird. Like, what? Why do you need that? Just getting a seal pick. So I try something like this. work at this a little bit. It's kind of wedged in there now. I'm just going to use two picks to kind of work my way behind the o-ring. So I'll pull it out a little bit and hold it. Get behind there. Get behind there. There we go. So there's our o-ring. Again, I have no idea why they have these. It's kind of stupid, but it's what it is, right? O-ring's off. After a quick glove change, there's our rotor. Alright, so now we're down to bare bones. I'm going to get a, um, a die grinder with a, what they call them, from the roto zip, roto lock, I don't know what they call them. I'll show you. This is not something you have to do, but just to clean up that hub to make sure there's no, no rust that's going to interfere with, with uh, where the new rotor goes on. So just one of these, these discs here. If anybody remembers the name of this thing, just stick it in the comments. You get them on Amazon. They're made by 3M and probably lots of other people. But it just removes rust without removing material. This one's not that bad, though. It's gonna be tougher to get that one. But yeah, there's not a lot of rust on here, which is, you know, it's a Florida vehicle. What do you expect? So, clean this up a bit more. Now, if you live in a northern climate, in the salt belt, you want to pay more attention to this. All right, I'm going to take this bad boy over to the parts washer and just give it a good cleaning. All right, got our bracket all nice and cleaned up. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. So that's ready for reinstallation. Uh, but before we do that, let's compress this caliper a bit. So to do that, I usually stick a brake pad in there. Can you guys see this? No, you can't. So I got a brake pad on the piston. You know what, let me unhang it so you guys can see and so I can reach. Better. So I'm just going to use an old brake pad as kind of a shim so I can press both pistons at the same time. Single piston calipers, you don't really have that concern. Well, I mean, you do kind of use a pad still, but it's less of an issue. Press this 
more. Too much. There we go. I think it's just right. And then just slowly tighten. Now you may need to put a clamp on the other side too, which I will get. So let's put this bad boy on the other side. And that just prevents fluid from going from one side to the other, and this forces it back to the master cylinder. Make sure you check the fluid level in your master cylinder often, because like I said, this is, if it's already pretty full, this could cause it to overflow. And obviously don't use your new brake pad here. That's what it should look like when your pistons are fully retracted. Take some brake cleaner and just do some general cleanup here. Let's clean our caliper too. everything off really good and the nice thing about brake cleaner is that it'll air dry you don't need to use compressed air just give it a minute this will all evaporate next we're going to grease up the bracket it's easier to do that when it's not on the vehicle let's get you focused on my lap over here I'm going to flip this over like so, and we're going to put grease in here and in here. If you do this after the bracket's installed, you risk getting this stuff on your brand new rotor, which is bad. You're going to have a bad time. Okay. Doesn't need a lot. Just like that. And just make sure there's no grease in here because that will touch the rotor and you guessed it, gonna have a bad time. So just like that. And now with clean gloves we're going to take our brand new rotor out of its brand new factory damaged packaging. Man she's a heavy girl. There you go. That's the rotor. I'm not going to hold it up for too long, sorry. Slide it on. Let's put our silly O-ring back in place for whatever purpose it might or might not serve. I mean, I took a lot of heat when I did the rear brakes in this thing from the people out in YouTube land about this O-ring. Like, oh, you should know about this. Oh, the O-ring, the O-ring. Well, you know, I've been doing brake jobs for like 20 years, and it's probably one of the first cars I've worked on that needed an O-ring for brakes. So forgive me if it's uh, an obvious purpose, but I still don't see the point. All right, now we're just going to slide our bracket back in place. I like to do the top bolt first. And these get torqued to 148 foot-pounds, so that's pretty serious. Do not want these coming loose because kind of important for stopping, you know. Just tighten them by hand. There we go. Let's get our socket, which again was uh, 13 sixteenths, half inch torque wrench. Not a 
lot of room to work as usual. Getting a couple clicks each time. Let me get down on the ground, might be a little bit easier. Ah, jeez. There we go. Jeez. Brutal. 148 foot pounds, folks. Bottom bolt now. There we go. Whew. Now it's time to put Mr. Caliper back in with brand new pads. So, sorry, that was a little, that was kind of brutal. So one pad goes on like so. The other pad's gonna get snapped into the caliper and then installed. Now I like to put a little bit of grease on the back of the pad too. It just helps prevent any squealing. You don't need a lot, just a bit. Something about like that. We'll do the same thing on the new inboard pad. Like so. retrieve our caliper from our cal caliper hanging apparatus. Let's install the new inboard pad by simply pushing it into place. Just like that. Nice and easy folks. And then just slide the caliper into place like that. Now, I've read mixed things about greasing the slide pin bolts. I, I don't see how these can operate if they're not greased. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease on them because I did this in the back and I've had absolutely zero problems. And if these can't move, the caliper can't retract properly. And what happens if the caliper can't retract? Going to have a bad time. So let's shove this one in the hole, like so. I'm going to grab a socket, if I can find it. Where is that 11 millimeter? Can I move it? You guys see it? All right, let me go find that. Okay, just got that clamp there temporarily while I'm, whoops, sorry about that. While I retrieve this 11 millimeter. Now I'm gonna move it so that I can hold the caliper and find the hole at the same time. And it appears I found the hole. It was easy. And these get torqued to 41 foot pounds. A bit of grease like before. And just screw it in like the top one. Okay, they're hand tight, but you want this caliper to be able to move back and forth like that. That's totally normal. 
if your caliper is not moving like that, then I suggest you grease those pegs, but it's up to you. Listen to the factory if you'd like. But it's kind of weird because the factory published different material depending on where you read. And again, torque spec here is 41 foot pounds. One. Nice click there. Let's get the bottom one. Two. Put our dust cap back in place. And let's put this piece of hardware back on too. So believe the way this is installed. All right, I think this side is good to go. I am gonna put some uh, anti-seize on, um, on the wheel studs just to make this side easier to work on at a future date. And we got this Permatex stuff. Leave a link to this and also the disc brake caliper lube in the description for anybody that needs this stuff. It's fairly inexpensive on Amazon or your auto, local auto parts store, whatever you prefer. Doesn't need a lot. That'll do it. I'm going to go step on the brake pedal just so you can see what things look like. And you should see that caliper move. All right, here goes nothing. It's going to sink. Did. There, now we have a fairly solid pedal. Did you see it move? Hope so. Now, with your foot off the brake, that caliper should still move ever so slightly. Shouldn't be locked in place. See, it still slides back and forth. That's exactly what it should do. Ready to put the tire back on. Took a moment, just took the wheel outside and just cleaned it off. Didn't go too nuts, just, to, just enough to clean the inside, because how often do you really clean the inside of your wheels, right? I bet not too often. Except maybe once every brake job. Got everything started. lug nuts on. What do they say? Installation is the reverse of removal. because these lug nuts center the wheel too. If you ever looked at them, they're, they're conical. And the wheel is conical too. They make sure the wheel is centered on the, or the tire wheel assembly is centered on the, the hub. This side is done. Don't recall if I mentioned it before, but one thing that's good to do when you have the wheel off, or not off, but the wheel up in the air, just grab your wheel, go like this, 
you don't want that you don't want to feel any play in the wheel at all. Those bearings should be tight. If you feel like the wheel is a little loose or has a little slop in it, you might have uh, bad tie rods, you might have bad bearings. So that's cause for further investigation. But this side's done. Okay, onto the driver's side. This is exactly the same as the other side, so I'm probably not going to be as verbose in my explanations, but I'll give you guys the play by play. Let's jack the vehicle up first. So, put our safety jack stand under there. And we're just going to drop the vehicle onto both. So the vehicle is held in place with both. Belts and suspenders. This is safety after all, right? It's got our impact gun. Buzz these lug nuts off. Should've gloved up. glove up now. Let's take Mr. Tire off. Taking those plastic dust caps off of slide pins. We get our 11 millimeter. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, folks. One. Two. Here are two slide pins, also bone dry. Get our breaker bar and our 1316 socket. Actually, let's get the get the caliper off first. I'm gonna say yeah, I'm thinking we could probably just push this in. Use a screwdriver to remove these. There we go. That doesn't launch them across the room. And Mr. Caliper comes off. We need a hanger, right? So I think I threw the hanger up there last time. We'll hang that for now. Let's take that pad off. Same wear pattern as the other side. The outboard pad is worn way more. Give you a little visual.
pretty remarkable difference, huh? So this inboard pad in my left hand, I mean, it doesn't even look that worn at all. It looks like the outboard pad. I was taking the brunt of it, but oh well. That's why we're doing this, right? Let's get our bracket off. And again, for that, we have our 1316 socket. Whew. That's ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, right? After the bottom one. There might actually be room to get an impact gun in here, but I'm not going to bother. It really isn't that difficult. There's our bracket. Let's see how it looks. About the same. No real wear. Let's remember to take that O ring off now. smack it. Ear protection, check. Persuader, check. <laughs> All right, let me go clean up some parts. I got my bracket all cleaned up. Got the caliper as clean as it's gonna get. It's just gonna get dirty again anyway. But let's put our brand new rotor on. Like so. Don't forget your O ring. It was so important. Oh, ow. That goes through, yeah, I think I cut myself. Look at that. Work comp. After a few moments of crying to myself, and a new glove, we're back in business. So ring doesn't want to cooperate. I'm being a little bit more careful now. Since I already injured myself once. Although, miraculously, that's the only injury I've gotten so far. Probably shouldn't say that out loud. There we go. Our ring's on. Let's get our bracket back on. Rings normally for sealing things. Why would you need an O-ring for a brake rod? You're not sealing anything. Where'd my socket go? There we go. A slightly different angle. That's a helpful one. I 
I don't think I gave you this angle on the other side, so. Bonus footage. Alrighty then. Let's get Mr. Torque Run set to 148 foot pounds. Same thing we did before. I don't think you guys are going to see this, sorry. Ah, maybe we'll see. Let's do the bottom first. Make sure my head's in the way. Time to back butter our brake pad. This one's a little dirty. Wonderful. That's going to go inside our caliper. Let's take it off the hanger first. My luck, you won't be able to remove it. So, I'm going to use my clamp just to kind of anchor it on there like I did before until I get this slide pin bolt moved up. that bottom bolt. Do you remember reading online somewhere someone said that they had like different size different sizes of these. Someone said they had a 10 millimeter and other ones that they had 11 so your mileage may vary you might want to just double check your vehicle before you go taking things apart. Pop those dust caps off. It's easy enough to do while the vehicle's still on the ground and all together. And again, the slide pin bolts get 41 foot pounds. 
I guarantee you no mechanic in the world torques these things. One. And in reality, you develop a feel for this stuff too. Now, one thing I don't think I'd mentioned that I would have actually done as part of this video, notice this bleeder screw on the brakes is very easily accessible. Um, anytime I do a brake job like this, I'll normally flush about a quart of uh, fluid through the system. Maybe not every time, but get, depending upon the age of the vehicle and what condition the brake fluid's in. It's very easy to do this with the wheel off. So I have a power bleeder. I actually did a video on that, I think on a, a Ram maybe, 2015, 2017 Ram. And it's actually very easy to do that. You just hook up a little hose here, stick it in a, a waste container, and you hook up a power bleeder to the master cylinder reservoir. And you loosen the bleeder screw, it just blows fresh brake fluid through the whole system. And you just wait till it comes out clear. So, the only reason I didn't do that today is I don't have any brake fluid in stock. And my auto parts store, local auto parts store, is out of stock of the stuff I normally use. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to do that today. So anyway, let's put this let's put this bad boy on. Get our screwdriver and shove it in there. Of course, today it's fighting. You get a smaller screwdriver. Oh, this one's got goo all over it. Maybe that's why. Like there's rubber cement on it. Let's try it again, shall we? This side is done too. Actually, I lied. I'm gonna put the dust caps back in. Also, have to put some anti seize on the rotor, on the wheel studs. Your future self will thank you. Oops, got some goo on the floor. Don't step in it. Yummy. All right, what else am I missing? Got no leftover parts, that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, I guess we gotta put the wheel back on. Yeah, we kinda need that, right? Let's put Mr. Tire back on. Here we go. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Good, we got a solid pedal. Now, if you don't pump the brakes, ahead of time and you're not experienced doing this you could go 
test drive the vehicle, back out of your driveway, you know, pull into the street or whatever, need to hit the brakes, and all of a sudden the pedal goes to the floor, you have no brakes. That's because you sent all the fluid back to the master cylinder. So it's always a good idea, just for safety reasons, to pump the brakes before you go for a test drive, um, or at least expect to have to do it when you're doing the test drive. Don't like pull out of your driveway and into traffic immediately expecting to rely on the service brake. Bad things will happen. Let's bring the vehicle down onto the ground. I'm gonna pump up a little bit. Jack stands out of there, and we'll release the floor jack. Down goes the vehicle. And you might have thought that we were done, but we're not. So Power Stop wants you to follow this braking procedure. I'm not going to film it, but I'll let you guys screenshot this. And I mean, you're going to get a copy of this anyway if you order their brakes, but this is what they want you to do. So I'm going to do this off camera so you won't see this. But anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you have brakes to do on your 2015 Grand Cherokee, especially front brakes, hopefully you found this video helpful. Pretty easy to do. Um, just a couple special tools. Actually, not really too many special tools. You'll need a if you want to torque the bolts down, you'll need a half inch uh, torque wrench, 3 8 torque wrench. Um, but the, the special tool you will be required to have, which at least I consider special, is that 11 millimeter uh, Allen, Allen key for, um, for the caliper bolts. Anyway, if you found this helpful, please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.